some dark old place in my brain. I can switch on the light. Uh, Emma, I'm going after that demon today. I need something to fight with. I told you not to trade your gun for candy Lego. But you can stack it! Oh. <laughs> Alright, fine, I'll get the backup. Welcome to Oh the Horror. I'm Fedora, and yeah, this uh, stinking pestilent place is apparently where my text says the first demon's gonna show up. So uh, until it actually arrives, I guess we'll get a big fan request out of the way, shall we? The 1994 comedy horror that features both a Freddy knockoff and the late Christopher Lee. <laughs> How can I possibly say no? This is Funny Man. Ooh, another beginning quote. Okay, let's see how I can mess with this one. If anyone thinks he is wise in this age, let him become a fool, that he may find true wisdom. And especially remember, if you tweet an apology, try to remember to spell the name of the country right. So, this movie starts in the Bahamas. Ah, <laughs> wow, great set des- oh, sorry. No, we're actually at some shady nightclub where this group of Hawaiian shirt wearers are playing some high stakes poker. Where our hero Max has just raised the stakes up to 50 G's. I'd like to call your bluff an ass, but uh, only a moron would try to do that with a lousy pair. Well, that leaves me and the weirdo in the white suit. Howdy folks, it's me, Colonel Sanders. Actually, I don't think I'm too far off. To be honest now, I would like to apologize. Practically 70 episodes in, and this is the first Christopher Lee movie I've reviewed. This. 50,000? Ha! Christopher Lee throws his million dollar ancestral home in England into the pot. <laughs> he must be pretty damn confident about his hand. Good night, Vienna. <laughs> You're a funny man, Mr. Taylor. But I've met funnier. And so will you. It's a trap! So Max wastes no time and gets his brother John to start moving all of his shit to Christopher Lee's former house in London. Oh good, I got a like already. And then... The... Scooby-Doo gang and Pam Greer appear hitchhiking? Hi, where are you going? Hell and Buckman. Uh, sorry, Manchester's back the other way. Even if I believe that accent for a second, the fact that she has it probably means she- Yep, yep, she's Tia Dharma. And yep, I saw that coming a mile away. Meanwhile, Max himself has arrived at the house with his family. And thank God. Because the literal mountains of paperwork, tax statements, change of address forms, and all that shit the government would need before he could even look at that house, not to mention the many, many thousands he would have to pay, would make for a very boring movie. And along with the house, for no extra charge, you get some free Christopher Lee nursery rhymes. Will you walk a little faster, said the whiting to the snail. There's a porpoise close behind us, and it's treading on my tail. But who could know? Or guess the rules adrift upon the ship of fools. You spin me right round, baby, right round. And spinning that wheel seems to be what summons the titular funny man. The funny man starts using his magic to lure Max's son Ron, I mean Harry, I mean Ron, into the hallway from the Overlook Hotel, where he actually kills him. 
That's right. No snot-nosed little kid surviving this. Wise words. Thanks, Udo. Yeah, like Udo Kier from Dracula 3000. Christopher Lee, whose entire contribution to this movie was done in one day, will appear at random throughout the movie to comment on events. Instantly making this the greatest team-up review of all time. Next, the funny man goes after Max's wife with the old impersonating voice trick. And she winds up in some kind of art gallery featuring the great works of Nobby. Nobby? Nobby, I think. Yes, yeah. Nobby. It takes her a while to notice the funny man, but because her and Max ate a whole bag of sherbet about an hour ago, I think she thinks he's a hallucination at first. Maybe this is what the It remake is going to look like if Pennywise is played by Caitlyn Jenner. And then the funny man starts talking to the audience. Two Swedish girls last week. Mind you, I know fuck all about her. Us York suggesters, why? We don't fuck a while when it comes to offing birds. Thank you, Ray Winstone, dressed as a jester. She tries running, but just keeps ending up back where she started. Don't get too upset. I'm sure Trinity will turn up on the train to pick you up soon. <laughs> Now that is the way to do it. Who is this guy? Deadpool? And finally it's daughter Jamie's turn. Well, thank god the movie had the sense to change the audio. Don't want the copyright vultures swooping down on me for that one. I gotta say, this is some pretty chipper music for a scene of a young girl being electrocuted to death. <laughs> Look at the concern. Hmm. So far I'm having some mixed views of the funny man as a character. On the one hand, I'm really happy that despite being a clown slash jester, he isn't annoying like Killjoy. His dialogue is very cockney and his humour is very dry. But at the same time, while he's very active, if he's not fully committing to the character, What's the point of making him a jester? And as far as the fourth wall breaking stuff goes, does he know he's in a movie? Can you see me, Mr. Funny Man? And while his entire family has been dying, I don't know what the hell Max has been up to. He's either coming down from his sugar high, or he's about to turn into a Super Saiyan. Sometime later, his brother and the weird hitchhikers arrive, and Naomi Harris here just forces her way in and starts calling out the funny man. I'd be careful with that. If you stick your boss with it, he might wind up as a severed head with bat wings. The group split up to look for Max and his family, while Voodoo Lady goes looking for the funny man, who's currently pissing all over their van. When you gotta go, you gotta go. She starts descending into a... Tim Burton movie set. And we cut back to Maximum High here, still tripping some serious balls. No guys, the Christmas episode was last week. Boy, keeping up with all this weirdness is doing my head in. Between playing soccer with a severed head, Velma, yeah, that's actually her name, looking for purple ducks. Duck! Where? And the funny man creating a TARDIS strip club and dressing up as... Donald Trump? This movie is like the group dream sequence from Nightmare on Elm Street 3, only if all the kids downed a plate of hash brownies first. But then that would insinuate that Max here left any for them. Okay, some more weird death scenes. So, Shaggy here gets his head stuck in a blobby brick wall, which then warps perception and sticks him on a beach in the middle of a puppet show. Well, there's absolutely bugger all in the papers. With all the imagery of jesters in this movie, the funny man himself just kind of acts like a bloke. 
I mean, I don't think I would have any less trouble taking him seriously if he looked like this. Oh god! Oh! Jesus! Okay, fine! Put the Jester gear back on! I wonder how many other internet reviewers at some point in their careers have asked themselves, do I or do I not have to censor this demon clown man's giant fake tits? So yeah, if that wasn't obvious, we're back with the strip club guy. And after his... Ugh, peep show... He has a backstage smoke and chat with the somewhat amusing man. No, but you don't get the point. But I do. But you don't. I do. No, but you don't get the point. Oh, I do, I do. I get the point. No, we don't get the point. Oh, I do. I get the point. You? Yeah. No! That, like actually quite a few of the kills in this movie, was a very weird build-up to a very ordinary death. In this case, beating him to death with a shoe. Back over to Voodoo Lady, and she's in the middle of a Mexican standoff. Luckily, she and... God, I am not kidding here. The stuff she injected into her hand turned her arm into a laser cannon. Turned her arm into a laser cannon. I've got nothing. Clearly, this is too batshit even for the funny man. So he puts a stop to it, Freddy's Revenge style. It's like my old dad used to say. They don't like it up em. And they don't, you know. And that means all that's left now is Max's brother. Who's looking a bit like Ronnie Wood if he played for ABBA. And you're probably wondering how the hell this scene could be any more what the fuck than the laser cannon arm. Well... Nope. I'm going! Nurse! Nurse! Oh, good. We're visiting the mental hospital. Hey, Christopher Lee, if you have a spare bed, I think I need a couple of nights. And so, after a long night of... Whatever the fuck that was. Uh, do you have any final words, funny man? Very appropriate. And then Max, with a staircase column wedged up his ass, wearing a jester hat made of body parts. Uh, if there's a joke or some kind of irony there, it's, uh, it's lost on me at this point. And that was... I'm very split here, because there's a lot about this movie that I do actually like. The visuals and sets are very interesting and diverse. The cinematography really complements the bizarre and often disturbing atmosphere. But on the flip side, my brain is bleeding. What is the funny man? What is his connection with Christopher Lee? When he was killing people, was he transporting them to alternate dimensions, or was it all in their heads? Why was the setup for his kills so insanely surreal, yet the kills themselves were actually mostly ordinary? These and so many other questions will remain unanswered, I'm afraid. All in all, a very interesting little movie with a lot more style than substance. Oh shit!
Let's go, motherfucker. We have time for tonight another horror, so save a screen for We're doing it Yorkshire style. Yorkshire style. Went to me nan's cause she does a nice cheap butty. I don't go every day, just on a Saturday after footy. I love it, are the butter on the bread, it is always runny, but it's note, we are red sauce.